Now, the place where, you know, most of my thoughts come from is that I'm a mother, first and foremost. And I look at the world with the lens of, through the lens of my children. And I'm sure most people who are parents do the same. Once you become parents, you look at the world through the eyes of your children. And the question plagues me all of the time, as, as I'm sure it would plague a lot of you, that how to keep their fitra intact, how to get the best out of our beautiful religion and enhance that fitra further in them, and how to keep that innocence that will always lean towards good. Um, so I'm sure all parents have strategies that they've used with their children. I'm sure they must have, you know, as many parents as they are, but it's something that we all share, this is something that we share a common concern. And I feel that there are a few practical things that we can do to ensure that. Salawat. And I personally feel it's important to nurture this fitra. And as, um, and like Sheikh Ali Raza mentioned yesterday, that it's important to explore the possibilities for how to instill this goodliness and godliness through practical ways. Even though he, you know, unfortunately he didn't get to go into his own ideas of, too, or too much into how to go about it practically. I feel like because our children are going to be the future generation of Muslims, it's important for us to think about these things. It's important to lay a strong foundation of goodly moral fitra, of empathy, conscience, self-control, respect, a sense of responsibility, tolerance, fairness, as taught by our Ahlul Bayt, in order to aid in that quest for a goodly and godly society. So I've got a few points on, you know, on personal things that I found in my research as to how to do that. Basics of how to nurture a fitra in young children. This is, these aren't parenting tips. I mean, there's so many things out there, how to raise you know, media savvy kids and how to raise confident Muslim kids and how to, you know, how to shield them from different things. It's not that. This is specifically you know, any child, Muslim or non-Muslim, but how to nurture that fitra. I think one of the things is that when we teach them, it's important to underline the purpose behind what we're doing. So for example, if you're teaching sharing, it's not, you know, okay, share, you know, share your crisp so that he'll share your cucumber slices with you, or share your toys so that, you know, she'll share your toys with you. It's share because sharing is good. You know, it's to show the purpose behind what we do is because it's good, you know? that we align it with that natural goodness within them, not because there's something in it for them, you know, but because it's inherently good. And also, like we saw with Prophet Musa, the learning happens out in the field. It's not theory, it's by following and by, you know, shadowing and interning and that kind of thing. So the best way they'll learn charity is not through a lecture, but by seeing us do it. Secondly, for the fitra, it's important to have something living to nurture. Be it a plant that they grow themselves, or be it pet fish or pet, you know, anything. I think it's very important to build that empathy. Unfortunately, we live in a world where children don't have access beyond their parents and siblings to other living creatures on a regular basis. But it's something very beautiful because it's something they naturally incline to. Um, also, a sense of respect for what is sacred. In the society we live, there's not a lot left that's sacred. We don't have places of worship that are actually sacred, you know? There's, everything is up for criticism. Everything is up for questioning. We're the, you know, almighty consumer who can rate and review and dig anything, you know? Everything is up for criticism, but there's nothing that's sacred. Things like parents and grandparents are sacred, you know? And that needs to be reinstilled. The earth is sacred. Teachers are sacred. And I feel like that if we reinstated that respect towards teachers, not an unquestioning, authoritative kind of thing, but a basic respect, I think that would work beautifully in our schools if our children were the ones who had the most respect, if they were the ones who were known to open doors for teachers, if they were the ones who were known to stay behind and help out, if our children were the ones who, you know, the, the Muslims are never the bullies, they're always the mediators, they're the peacemakers, they're the, you know, the helpful ones. 
you know, I feel like that would have a much greater impact than pulling them out of PE and pulling them out of swimming and pulling them out of music and pulling them out of, you know, and all that. It's through the respect that we can instill in them for the sacredness of teachers, the sacredness of their going to school. To instill a sense of responsibility and care in them, where they're, you know, be it a responsibility for younger siblings or towards their belongings or towards their work. There's got to be a sense of responsibility where they feel an integral part of a whole. Be it, you know, through chores. If it's their job to say, take out the bins and the home stops functioning when they don't do their bit. So they feel like they are a part of something and they will eventually feel a part of wider society where they make a difference. Their presence is appreciated. Um, another thing is, especially for the fitra, is that the fitra be devoid of fear. That there's, they don't grow up constantly criticized or um, ridiculed for their ideas because they'll grow up with fear and a fear of telling the truth. So it's important to avoid doing that and especially a fear of people's opinions, not to draw their attention too much to what people will think of them because that's counterproductive for the fitra. Another way is by telling them stories of good versus evil, or stories from the lives of people who've done good. And Alhamdulillah, our Quran and the stories of the Ahlul Bayt and their companions, they're replete with people having strived for good. I mean, Imam Ali al-Islam, known as the father of orphans, these are things that inspire and they know what's good and what's not good. You know, we have salihun ba'da salih, sadiqun ba'da salih, righteous person, truthful person after truthful. And like Sheikh Ali Radha said yesterday, just our Karbala narrative is a beautiful diamond that re reflects the light from all angles, replete with examples of heroes, of the Hur, you know, who chose right over wrong, of Qasim and On and Muhammad who rode out to the, to the enemy and dared to speak against the enemy as they were going out to meet them in battle. So this Amr bil Ma'roof and Nahyan al Munkar comes in from when they're young, if we nurture that fitra. But above all, I feel that children do not have a sense of godliness yet. They don't have a sense of who God is. They may say Allah Ekte when you know they'll repeat after you, but they don't. We are our children's first gods. We are their deity. And the most important thing we can do for their fitra is to be good. Children should not see us doing wrong. And, you know, when they, when they do not see us doing wrong, they won't know what that is. If they see us bending the truth about their age so we can pay, you know, a lower rate, you know, they're seeing us lie. But if they see us being kind to our own parents and grandparents, they will do the same. If they see us shoveling the neighbor's driveway or sweeping up leaves, you know, that's... If they see us taking out the neighbor's bin because he's forgotten, th those are the kind of things that have an impact on how they see their position in the world, how they see their function in society. And they'll do these things by default. If they hear racist remarks from our mouths, then it's no wonder that the apple should fall far from the tree.